Hi everyone, it's summer here in London and we're ready to drink some iced coffee. So we're going to take you through our preferred way of doing that, where we brew hot directly over ice to flash chill the brew. This is sometimes called Japanese style iced coffee. We'll talk about some of the benefits this has over cold brew or cold drip methods and apply the theory to a range of different brewers. So let's get into it. So why not just cold brew your coffee? Well, when we've spoken about extraction in the past and in other videos, we mentioned the three T's, time, temperature, and turbulence. The more of each of those you have, the more extraction you're gonna get in your coffee. So cold brew really utilizes time. It can steep for eight hours, 12 hours, 24 hours, and temperature and turbulence really become bit players at that point. The problem with cold brew is, once coffee is ground and saturated, it's exposed to oxygen during that really long steep time, and that's gonna impart a stale flavor to the brew. You can mitigate this if you do want to dabble with cold brew. Fill a bag with water to float on the top of the brew liquor, or even you can use oil or coconut oil or something to make a cap and really seal it off. And that's going to limit some of the oxidation during the process. But the benefits for us in ice filter, you don't have to have that really long time. So there's no forward planning involved. You can make an iced coffee straight away. So how the iced filter coffee method works is that you're going to apportion some of your brew water as ice. The ice is going to do two things. It's going to chill down the drink instantly. It's also going to dilute it. So what you can't do is keep everything else the same, simply add ice and expect not to have a watery tasting cup of coffee. You need to make the brewed coffee going onto the ice stronger. The problem is it needs to be strong, but it also needs to be well extracted. So to achieve a nice high extraction when using less brew water, you need to grind finer, you need to maybe agitate more, and you need to really make sure you're brewing as hot as you can. Now, it is worth noting that keeping the maths very simple doesn't exactly replicate what happens when you prepare a normal cup of hot coffee. By this, I mean if you normally brew 18 grams of coffee with 300 grams of water, you can't simply pour over 180 grams of water, stir down with 120 grams of ice, and expect to hit the same level of dilution. 120 grams of ice in the carafe equates to roughly 160 grams of brewing water, as the liquid retained in the coffee grounds does not make its way into the beverage weight. Adding 300 grams of water does not create 300 grams of brewed coffee. This means you should also think about updosing for iced filter coffee. Simply adding less ice won't necessarily work as your iced filter won't be cold enough not to dilute further when serving over a large block of ice, and you'll end up diluting to the point where the coffee wants to get to. Rather than 18 grams as your dose of coffee in this particular example, I'd advise more like 20. It's a balance between not going too heavy in your dose which will make under extraction harder to avoid as you're already constrained in your amount of brew water and not diluting so much that the resulting drink is watery. Under extraction will make the resulting drink less intense, potentially a little sour and salty without much in the way of complexity or aftertaste. By finding up our grind and stirring a little more aggressively, the plan is to create brewed coffee with a greater concentration of coffee solids and a balance more towards the bittersweet end of the spectrum. Now in hot drinks, I cannot abide too much bitterness but in cold drinks, I'm far more welcoming of the bite and angularity that bitterness can provide. I would therefore err on the side of really thoroughly extracting your larger dose of coffee grounds so as to create a more complex and intense iced filter once it's stirred down. It can be likely as well that cold coffee is more likely to be modified or corrected with a little sugar or milk, potentially with other things too, like fruit or tonic water. So having a more concentrated base is quite important. Okay, we've talked about the theory, let's put it into action. Let's prepare an iced filter coffee. So first thing we're gonna weigh out are coffee beans. Normally for a V60, I would be using 18 grams of coffee to 300 grams of water, but as we discussed, I'm gonna up this here to 20 grams of coffee. So rather than a 60 gram per liter ratio, that's closer to 66 grams per liter. Rather than grind on 14 or 15 that I'd normally do here, I'm gonna bring it down to 12 that finding up the grind will just promote a bit more extraction. Now something I don't want to do is heat up this carafe unnecessarily. So I'm going to actually rinse this in the sink to not heat up this at all. I'm going to put the kettle back on to keep it at 100 degrees. So I really want to maximize the temperature I can be brewing at here. So before brewing, I need to add my ice. It's gonna to serve to chill the drink down, but also dilute it. For 20 grams of coffee, I'm gonna add 
120 grams of ice and pour over 180 grams of brew water. So 20 grams to 300 total brew water or ice combined. This is on a rolling boil. I have my slightly finer ground coffee. So we are ready to brew. I've got 50 grams of water for the bloom. I'm gonna leave it a little bit longer than normal and really, really aggressively stir it up so it's going to aid a bit more extraction. So like 45 seconds or so we can continue to pour over. And I'm gonna do that really slowly. Just like with a normal pour over coffee, I'm trying to aim for any dark patches, anything that bubbles up that you really wanna make sure got properly saturated and keep the level about the same height in the brew cup. Water's drained through. We're about 3.15 on the clock. So we're gonna call that done. Now what really fascinates me here, if I stir this down and smell, there's a little coffee aroma, but not much even though this is still really aromatic. The reason being, as the hot coffee drips over the ice, that can kind of trap in some of the volatile aromas that are very fleeting and can leave the cup very readily. So if you have a hot cup and you bring it to your mouth and start to smell, you instantly start to enjoy the coffee. With iced coffee, that's not the case. You don't really get that aroma up front. All of those aromas that have been locked in will come out in the aftertaste once you've drunk a little bit and your palate has warmed up the liquid. I prefer to brew over small ice so it dilutes readily, chills the drink down nice and fast, and serve over large ice so you don't continue to dilute unnecessarily. And I would urge you to try and find a coffee with some really nice fruity notes in it, even some florals, because they're really going to add to what's a really refreshing and clean tasting drink. Now, heat drives out aromas that would otherwise slowly dissipate over time from your coffee. So that's why grinding coffee fresh, you get this rush of aroma coming out, pouring on the hot water again, more things are being driven out. That's really great. But as your coffee sits, those aromas are lost to the ether rather than being enjoyed by you when you drink it. And that's what's nice about iced coffee like this. When the hot brew liquor hits the ice, it's gonna immediately trap some of those volatile aromatics. So yes, it's not aromatic when you lift it to your mouth. It's not hugely intense in the aroma now, but When you take a sip and your mouth warms up the brew liquor, in the aftertaste you get a wealth of complexity. It's really enjoyable. It's got a lot more going on than up front. So it kind of flips what you experience with hot coffee where it's really aromatic uh, up front to being really interesting in the aftertaste with iced coffee. So in summary, if you want to prepare an iced filter coffee, take your normal starting dose of coffee that you want to make. Be that 15 grams for a V60 or AeroPress or 60 grams for a Mocha Master. From there, you know how much water you're normally going to use but a portion 40% of it as ice. So only 60% is gonna pass through the grounds. Then go back and correct your dose. Go from a 60 gram per liter ratio up to 65 to 70 grams for a little more intensity. And then you wanna do a few extra things. Take your grind a couple of clicks finer than you normally would for your hot method. Make sure you agitate more during the brew time and make sure you're brewing at as hot a temperature as possible. If you can extend your contact time as well, that's gonna really help. The hot coffee, once it's over the ice, just needs stirring down, and then you can serve it over a large chunk of ice in your glass, and it's gonna stay nice and cool without overly diluting. And that's all there is to it. You'll have a cup of ice filter ready to go in a matter of minutes, and I really hope you enjoy it as much as we do. So take care, and we'll see you soon.